Well, hi everybody. Welcome to the campus of the University of Southern Mississippi, and uh, it's an exciting time here at uh, Southern Miss. First of all, happy holidays to uh, all our Golden Eagle fans. It's uh, uh, I'm John Cox. I'm joined by the athletic director, Bill McGillis. And Bill, it's a kind of a, a quiet time right now at Southern Miss, but what a great uh, first semester we've had around Southern Miss here in 2014, 2015. So many wonderful things happening, so many great things on the horizon, and uh, we wanted to take a few minutes to sit down and, and visit with you about some of the things that have happened and some of the things that are going on. And, and really it all started, uh, I guess, uh, about 10 months ago when we found out Ray Guy was going to go into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And uh, Ray, that was a great event up in Canton back in August. And, uh, you know, you talk about Ray Guy. You talk about guys like Brian Dozier and Austin Davis. Seems like every time you, you turn on the TV, you're seeing something about Southern Miss. It's, it's, uh, it has been a very good 2014. And, and uh, happy holidays to you, John, and your family. and and all the Golden Eagles out there. Uh, but you're right, you know, the induction of, of Ray and, and Canton uh, in July was just a, you know, such a great time for him personally and for the university. It was, it was a chance to celebrate really the legacy of, of Southern Miss and, and the history of Southern Miss. And to be on that national stage was a special opportunity for Southern Miss and, and our people and, um, you know, we ended up celebrating Ray's achievements again during the football season, which was a which was really neat and uh, really a special time. And you're right. I mean, there's we have so many great former student athletes here who have have done so many things at at a big level. And to see it continue with Austin Davis, you know, having a terrific season when given the opportunity by the Rams and Brian Dozier as an All Star, and it's also neat to see a lot of these guys back on campus. You know, Brian is here. Um, almost every day in the new baseball weight room, which I know we'll talk about. Right. And, uh, uh, you know, Brett Favre, Brett's been, been involved this year. And, and uh, you know, there's just so many. You can't mention them all. Um, but, but Ray's kind of crowning achievement to his career was just a spectacular way to start the year. One of the, the, the things that, that you do as athletic director, you got to make sure that the, the right people are kind of in the right uh, positions. And, and during the course of the year, uh, we've added a couple of new coaches. And John Stewart, who's taken over running the, the track and field program. And then Wendy Hogue, who's taken over the women's softball program. And two uh, outstanding coaches who are really going to do big things, I think, at Southern Miss. I think so, too. And I think you're right. I think, you know, I think maybe the two most important things that an athletic director, athletic administrator can do, whether it's at Southern Miss or, or anywhere else, is number one, surround your student athletes with the right leadership. Men and women of integrity, uh, that, are, that are good role models, um, where character development's important to them, uh, along with all of the on the field attributes. And, and we've got an outstanding group of head coaches here. We've got a very strong administrative staff of of, uh, of, of folks that serve our student athletes and our coaches and, and that's part of what makes this place special and it's part of why Southern Miss has obviously had so much success historically is the great leadership of head coaches and John Stewart had you know a great 15 year run as an assistant coach at, at Georgia had been a head coach before that and I think we'll do great things with their track and field program and then Wendy Hogue um, you know a, a woman from our community very popular um, outstanding track record at William Carey, uh, taking them to the national championship game last year, um, is an outstanding softball coach. Um, again, a great role model for young women. Uh, she's a native uh, of the Pine Belt area and was very, very excited that she you know, chose to join us at Southern Miss. And I think you'll also see great things in softball moving forward. Lots of things in the news concerning Southern Miss, but maybe the biggest most recently has been the logo. Talk a little bit about that process, uh, how that went along, how it began, and, and how it's starting to finish up now. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's been, it's taken some time. And uh, as most of our fans know, and, and if they don't, I'd encourage them to go to the special website that was created, southernmisslogo.com. Um, but a court decision in 2011 um, essentially mandated that uh, the university change its logo. Uh, as a result of the University of Iowa uh, believing that that our logo our logo too closely resembled the Iowa Hawkeye a lot of a lot of disagreement about that uh, probably myself included um, but 
but we asked Rodney Richardson and his team at Rare Design here in Hattiesburg, a, a phenomenal firm, to uh, look at modifying our logo and uh, kind of go through a process of evolution, not revolution, keep some of the characteristics and features um, of the Eagle Head logo that was adopted, I think, 11 years ago uh, that our fans enjoy, that a lot of equity has been built up in. And so we asked him to do that. He came up with two or three very good options. Um, as you know, we share those with, with our fans to, to get their feedback. And it was a tremendous response from, from our people. Over 2,500 uh, Southern Miss folks left comments on that website. Um, and I, I think both of those logos, and they really closely resembled each other. Both of them were very well received. Um, probably a few more favored. Uh, the traditional eye logo, which keeps the same eye as the existing Google, uh, Golden Eagle head, um, got a few more votes. I think 50 per 7, 57% of the votes. And, uh, but it was a great response. And, and I think people are overwhelmingly positive about where that's going to end up. Now, we're not at the finish line yet. We're not going to produce any product yet. We're not going to give the go-ahead to vendors and manufacturers to create items with the new logo because we don't want to hiccup until we get to the finish line. So we're going to be patient. We're going to take a conservative approach. It's probably going to take six to 12 months to have the mark trademarked by the U.S. Patent um, and Trademark Office. That's underway. We've already submitted uh, the mark and uh, very confident that before we get to the fall, that logo will be approved and we'll have uh, plenty of merchandise and apparel with the, with the new logo going into the football season. Well, speaking of football season, that's just finished up at Southern Miss. And, uh, of course, Todd Munkin, the head coach, I think there's, without question, around the country, people know Todd Munkin's a guy who's doing it the right way of getting Southern Miss back to where Southern Miss fans want it to be and where Southern Miss football wants to be. Talk about this past football season, Coach Munkin, and some of the things that you saw that Golden Eagle football improved in and got better at as they take that step towards getting back where we want to be. I do want to make it very clear, you know, to our folks that I have tremendous confidence in Todd Munkin. Been around a lot of college football coaches. Um, he's an outstanding leader, a great mentor of young men. He's very consistent. He's very bright. Uh, and I think he's building, rebuilding this program to stand the test of time. And, uh, you know, all of us as fans would love the scoreboard to, to reflect a few more W's, um, but I think we're on a great path in football uh, under his leadership. Very, very confident where it's heading. I think we have a chance to have a very successful season in 2015. Um, you know, you, you got to look back at, at where we were two years ago, and, uh, and, and it's going to be an in incremental climb back. I was in New York City last week, John, at the National Football Foundation Awards dinner, probably the biggest event in college football annually, and had a chance to talk to a lot of people uh, about Southern Miss and about Todd Monk, and they'd asked me about our football program. And, you know, I, I took every opportunity to remind them that this is the 33rd winningest program in the history of college football, and it's happening right now. The rest restoration's underway. And, you know, as you know, you follow up more closely than anybody. We've got 11 starters back on offense next year, uh, a number of starters on defense. We redshirted good players. We're going to have greater depth. You know, some of those areas that, that Coach Munkin and his staff wanted to shore up, that's happening. Um, a very, very good uh, December recruiting period uh, resulted in, I think, eight or nine young men signing with us who will be here in January, which is a lot different than coming in the fall. And... Uh, so I feel great. Winning football is on the horizon. It's being done the right way, uh, and I feel, you know, really good about the bright days ahead with our football program. And I think you'd agree with this. I think if you if you looked at it with an open eye, each and every game this year, the team got better. Now sometimes it was a little a bit, sometimes a big portion that they got better, but it got better each and every week. I thought during the season. No doubt, no doubt. You know, the last one against UAB was probably maybe a little bit different, but, but that was an unusual situation, you know, with the, with the dynamics facing UAB and those players and the way they came out. But, you know, I've thought since the day I came, and I've now watched 24 football games with this team, and that improvement has been steady to me. 
And I think the reality is, and, and Todd never makes excuses about injuries. He just doesn't. And uh, uh, we've got good young men, good players, but we've got to build our depth, build our talent base. Um, I think it's a reality that if our, you know, if Nick Mullins had not gotten hurt, we'd have won six or seven games. And that's not really a woulda, coulda, shoulda. I think that's that's a fact. And uh, that's part of why I feel so good about next year. And uh, you know, you can feel it within the building. You can feel it when you're around our football team, when you're in a staff meeting with the football staff, when you're talking to football recruits, which I've had to do, I think, three or four weekends in a row. And uh, we're going to be a force in college football again. And I know that's hard sometimes for people to, to see and, and maybe even believe because of some of the challenges we faced. Um, but I'm really confident that's happening. Football, all the sports, are important, but so is academics. And, and our student athletes at Southern Miss are as successful in the classroom uh, as they are on the athletic venues. I mean, we, we see so many of them that come back that have gone out into the business world or professional sports, whatever the case may be, and they come back with great success stories. I mean, our academic people do an amazing job to make sure that our student athletes have the wherewithal to be successful both athletically and academically. They do, and uh, you know, I'm glad we have this opportunity to talk about our student athletes and their academic achievement because it's the essence of what we do is their education. And you don't, you know, it's not written about a lot in the newspaper or talked about in the electronic media, so we need to talk about it when we can. But you know, our 360 student athletes uh, do a great job in the classroom, and the cumulative GPA of the entire group is approaching 3.0. We had another very good semester this fall. Uh, nearly 40 student athletes earned a 4.0 in the last year. Uh, our cross country program, as we've talked about before, and I'm gonna talk about it every chance I get. Two years running, the highest grade point average in the nation. You know, there's over 250 universities competing at the division one level in cross country, and the University of Southern Mississippi's has the highest grade point average in the nation. Two straight years, it's amazing. Our men's tennis team last year, the highest grade point average of any male team, any sport, at any school uh, in Conference USA, I think about a 3.6. Uh, so doing a really nice job in the classroom. You and I had a chance to, to um, be a part of a reception for our graduating student athletes who went through winter commencement. 24 student athletes graduated a, a week ago. And that's such a neat moment, seeing them walk across that stage, you know, regardless of the sport again. And the other thing is, uh, you know, the way they represent the university and the community. We ask our student athletes uh, for three or four things, to maximize their potential in the classroom. Whatever level of gifts they have, maximize it. You know, to maximize the physical gifts and the athletic attributes they have every day, to be a great teammate and to represent the university with class. And we've got excellent young men and women that do that every day. On occasion, you're gonna hear about a headline of you know, uh, an 18 to 22 year old who makes a mistake, or a couple of them that make a mistake. But they should never, never overwhelm the great work uh, and the great way in, in which these young men and women represent the university. I think that's the neat thing. I, I, I love that moment when they graduate because that's when it kind of hits them, I think, a little bit that what their experience at Southern Miss, whether it's been four years or five years or two years, whatever the case may be. And, and when they come back years later, it, it's neat to know what Southern Miss has meant to them. That, that's really uh, what makes it special. Championships are great, wins are great, but it's neat to see those student athletes come back and know, hey, I'm glad I'm a part of what's going on at Southern Miss. You know, it sure is. And as you, as you talk about that, it, it, it brought me back to several things this fall. It brought me back to homecoming and, and the number of student athletes that came back and you and I and others had a chance to visit with from all sports, the way the campus was that day. Um, uh, you know, but a former criminal justice major in our football program, Anthony, Anthony Jones, I mm -hmm. believe, came back and, and he and I had a chance to visit in the office about his career in the CIA and the Secret Service before that. Uh, you know, to visit with Adelius Thomas about the five restaurants that he's running uh, in, in the Research Triangle area of North Carolina and in Baltimore. Uh, you know, the, the 20 plus swimmers that we had back that competed here in the 80s and what it meant for them to come back to the university and to hear the great things they're doing. You know, that's what it's about. 
And uh, when I talk to prospective student athletes about coming to Southern Miss, and, and we talk about facilities and tradition, a lot of different things, I always try to draw them back to making a decision about the people. And, and, and I've heard Dr. Bennett reference the Southern Miss spirit, you know, and, and you and I had a chance to visit with a young man this morning about that, and it's a special thing here. Mm -hmm. And to see the, the student athletes do so well academically here, go on to great things in their careers, and then come back to campus is, is you know, one of the most fulfilling things uh, I know as an athletic director, as a coach, as a faculty member, for all of us in higher education. The year and a half or so you've been the athletic director at, at Southern Miss, and I've gotten a chance to know you. One thing that I know is you've got a great vision for Southern Miss, and it's, it's not a short-term vision, uh, not a couple of weeks or a couple of months down the road. You're looking at a year down the road or five years down the road, 10 or 15 years down the road of, of positioning Southern Miss to do all the things that our fans want it to be able to do. Talk about your vision and, and how you see Southern Miss in the future for this athletic program. And I think, John, it's our vision. And you and I have had a chance to talk about it. Our staff has had a chance to talk about it. The leadership of the university has had a chance to talk about it. And our fans certainly talk about it. But, um, and I get asked a lot about, about that. What's your vision? What's on the horizon? You know, where are we headed? And how are we going to get there? And, um, you know, I don't think it's an overly complex formula. Um, I think our expectations and our aspirations, you know, should be very clear. But I think generally speaking, what we all need to talk about is having a model intercollegiate athletics program at Southern Miss. And we can do that. And, and what is that? What's it defined by? I think it's defined by four or five things. One is the quality of the student athlete experience. When they leave here, uh, do they feel like they're golden eagles for life? And have they had a great experience at Southern Miss? That, to me, is number one. Okay. Secondly is, are we graduating our student athletes at a really high rate? And we are. We're graduating almost every single young woman and young man that comes through this program uh, at a rate that, 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 that's higher than the, the student body, which is doing great things as a student body. Uh, but our student athletes are doing that. Um, Operating with integrity, and these are in no particular order. This, this, this could and probably should be number one. And when I talk about operating with integrity, I'm talking about in every sense of the word. Academic integrity, fiscal integrity, um, professional and personal conduct, um, compliance with NCAA rules, all of those kinds of things. Because winning without integrity, um, you know, is, is unacceptable. Um, so that would be the third thing. Competitive success certainly needs to be a part of a model intercollegiate athletics program. And we've certainly had our share of that over the years, and I want to talk about a little bit more about that. Uh, and then lastly, number five, I think, is a model program brings credit to the university. It ignites a fan base in a positive way. It draws people together on this campus. You know, it serves as a public as a positive public relations tool. Um, you know, a, a great program makes an impact in the community, serves the community. So we want that to be a piece of it. So it's really those five things. And as you look ahead, you look at where we are and you look ahead, some of those things are happening and other things we can do better. And for me, the path forward here, uh, you know, to go from a period where, where um, We've been short in terms of competitive success in our football program uh, in, in this uh, period of time. And, and uh, we've certainly faced, like almost every program in, in college athletics, very challenging financial times. You know, and, and you and I know, know that. And, and, and there's a changing national landscape. So when you kind of mix those things in, what's the path forward? You know, in my mind, it's a combination of continuing to do the right things, okay? Um, it's, it's your student athletes continuing to perform in the classroom. It's continuing to operate with integrity. Um, it's, it's for us right now um, so critical that we restore the greatness of our football program. Football is the financial engine at almost every Division I campus in the country and it certainly is here. 
And so we're very focused every single day. You know, and we're not able to talk every single day about what's happening behind the scenes. You know, what Coach Munkin is doing, what that staff is doing, our conversations on how to move it forward. But we're focused on scheduling the right opponents, on initially positioning ourselves for bowl eligibility next year and beyond, uh, and becoming a championship program again. So every single day, I'm thinking about how can we be a championship football program again? And how do we bring joy again to this great fan base that cares so much about this program? And, um, you know, you, you recruit players, you develop players, uh, you limit attrition, you have continuity of leadership, and all those things are in place and all those things are happening right now. So, so uh, do the right things, restore greatness in football, achieve competitive success in, in, in our basketball programs for sure, and in baseball, you know, let's get back to the regionals again, and in our other sports, compete at a high level in Conference USA. Got to do that. We've got to restore our, uh, uh, stabilize our financial position. And we can talk a bit later about how to do that and how people can help. Mm -hmm. But we've got to do that. Um, and I think if those things happen, we do a great job in terms of the entertainment experience when, when people come to The Rock and come to Reed Green Coliseum and, and come to Pete Taylor Park. I think that's important. Uh, and our staff is focused on those things every day. Finally, we have to continue to invest in this program while going through challenging financial times, being great stewards of the resources we have, okay, because they're precious, they're scarce. Um, we've, get, we've got to do a great job. We've got to be frugal. We've got to make prudent financial decisions. We've got to maximize every revenue stream we have, every contract we have, We've got to maximize um, every revenue opportunity, merchandising, licensing, concessions, parking, whatever it is, we've got to do that. But we've got to invest. We have to invest, John. We've got to invest in our facilities. We've got to invest in our student athletes, invest in our staff. Um, and again, not let the, the, the landscape and the financial challenge of the day prevent us from investing in the future. And that's where our people can help so much. Well, talk about facilities. That's one thing. I, I, you were just showing me this is just hot off the presses. Uh, a plan you've got for regreen Coliseum, and I got, I got to admit, it, it's amazing when you look through here. Uh, what, what, what's on the drawing board there? But uh, some changes at Pete Taylor Park. Uh, there's some changes all around campus in our athletic facilities. Talk about that a little bit. Let's start. Let's start with baseball because it's 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 something we can check off the list that's just been done. We just took the keys, I think, last week to a new baseball weight room. And we had a handful of very generous people make that happen for us uh, with privately raised funds. A new about 2,200 square foot weight room uh, under the third base stands um, at Pete Taylor Park. It's going to be a great asset for Scott Berry, his coaching staff, and our players. Uh, Brian Dozier is now working out in that facility every day, as I might have mentioned. and. Uh, I think we're going to have a lot of other former players who are now playing professional baseball come back and work out here with the young men in our, in our program, which helps you become great, mm -hmm. by the way. Mm -hmm. But we got a fantastic baseball park. That's another piece. You know, we added the suites. We've added that. Uh, down the road, you know, we need to get the right video board out there at the baseball stadium. And we've got, we've got improvements that we need to make over the next five to ten years in, in a lot of sports. Uh, we need to find a way over time to build a great clubhouse. Uh, at our tennis complex. That's a piece that's missing. We need to find a way over time to build a great clubhouse with locker rooms um, for our track um, and soccer student athletes. That's a missing piece that we need to make happen uh, for sure. Um, we need to invest in the Duff Athletic Center. Um, Coach and I have spent a lot of time over the last 45 days talking about our football facilities. You and I are mm -hmm. overlooking the mm -hmm. rock right now. Um, which is a gem, um, uh, but our football locker room and our weight room are something we are we're about to attack, and uh, uh, we'll get to that and, and share some things in the spring on that. But you know, since I arrived uh, a little over a year ago, um, 
I talked in, in maybe one of our first interviews about the need to invest in facilities and improvements at the Coliseum. And so we retained um, probably the preeminent sports ar ar architect in the country out of Kansas City, a firm called Populous, to um, take a, a really in-depth look at the Coliseum, study it from an architectural perspective, from an engineering perspective, from a structural perspective, and tell us what it could be how could we transform that building? You and I just took a look. Mm -hmm. It was FedEx to us yesterday. Amazing. Um, their final draft of that. And we're going to share that in January with all of our stakeholders. And uh, we'll do it in a, in a public way, in some public settings. We'll do it via our website. Um, we'll certainly do it with um, the political stakeholders uh, in our state um, who we will ask uh, to invest in, in the Coliseum. Um, I think it ends up, I think that we can transform, based on what we've discover, discovered in this study, completely transform the Coliseum for probably 35 to 40 million dollars. A new arena, John, you and I talked about that, is about a, you know, is, is an 80 to 100 million dollar project, d depending on the size of the building, uh, infrastructure, and a lot of different things. But generally speaking, it's going to be in that ballpark, unless you do something too small. And, um, but for 35 to 40 million dollars, which is a big number, um, but I think it's something that's doable. And um, the plans that, that we'll share um, uh, reduce the size just a little bit down to, to from 76 to 7,800, down to about 7,000 or maybe just under 7,000 seats, um, going from bench seating primarily to chairbacks, hospitality space, club space, additional locker rooms, a new video board, new ribbon boards, you know, the bells and whistles, a new concourse, a new grand entry facing 4th Street, a lot of exciting ideas and opportunities. So part one was simply get this study done by the right people in the right way, and that's why it took some time. And we didn't want to share it prematurely because we wanted to make sure it was right, you know. Um, but really excited to share that with people. Um, early this spring, in January, and then we're all going to have to come together and look at, okay, how can we fund this as a community? Because it's not about the University of Southern Mississippi only, or, or maybe even, you know, from a majority perspective. The Reed Green Coliseum is the public venue for this part of Mississippi. And as we've talked about, and a lot of people in the community have talked to me about, we're not getting any concerts any family shows, you know, um, any of those big events that we used to get here. Mm -hmm. And um, so we're going to need everybody in the community to, to jump on board on this one and join with us in determining how we can fund this kind of project. And, and I know from personal conversations with promoters, some of the biggest promoters in the country, that if we're able to restore Reed Green Coliseum to a, to a state-of-the-art condition, and do the kinds of things talked about in this study, we will get big time concerts, big time events, and we're gonna bring our own big time basketball, big time volleyball uh, to Hattiesburg. Talk a little bit about, uh, talking about bringing things to our campus. We've recently had the Conference USA Volleyball Championships who are very successful. Uh, news the other day, the baseball tournament is coming back uh, to Hattiesburg, to Pete Taylor Park. How important is it to get those conference championships in our venues, on our campus, in our community. Very important. And again, that's something I talked about during my first year, and we were able to get the Conference USA Baseball Tournament back here last year. We had the Conference Volleyball Tournament here this year. We weren't fortunate enough to win it, um, but I think it was great for our team, great for our community to host that event. We'll have baseball back in 2015, just announced, and we're going to pursue it in future years as well. Um, and I think, it's, I think it's important for a lot of reasons. Um, and, and let's talk about the high school state all-star mm -hmm. game and, and mm -hmm. uh, state championships as well um, today. But, uh, um, you know, it gives our teams a great chance to win if we're hosting those events. And it makes a big economic impact on our community. When that volleyball tournament came here, those eight schools that came here filled up a lot of hotel mm -hmm. rooms, ate in a lot of restaurants. And I want our program, it goes back to the kind of that fifth area of of a model intercollegiate athletics program, serving and impacting the community. And every time we host a big event, 
you know, we, we put heads on beds. And, and again, meals are eaten here, people come in, they experience this beautiful campus and our great community. Um, selfishly, I like the chance it gives us to win. I like our kids to be able to sleep mm -hmm. in their own bed when they're competing for a championship. And uh, so we're gonna try to do that again. We submitted a bid to host the Conference USA basketball tournament. It was awarded to, uh, to Birmingham this year. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure it'll be back in Birmingham in the future, but uh, we submitted a bid both for Biloxi on the coast and also for here in Hattiesburg. And uh, I don't know if we'll get it here because of the home court advantage that, that other coaches in our league aren't gonna want us to have, but we're gonna keep bidding on those kinds of events. And, and uh, you know, the university is gonna host, as I mentioned, the Mississippi Alabama State uh, High School Football All-Star Game next year. It'll be the first time in 27 years that event has been, uh, you know, in Mississippi. Mm -hmm. And gonna be a great event, great event. And uh, uh, so we're looking forward to that. And then also looking forward to hosting the state high school football championships in the future. And, uh, and really optimistic we're gonna have the chance to do that uh, as well in the years to come. When I'm out and around, I know when you're out and around as well, people are always asking, what can I do? How can I help? And obviously some are capable of doing more than others, but uh, what's your answer when somebody says, Bill, what can I do to help Southern Miss Athletics get where it wants to be? That is a great question. And you know, it's probably one of the three or four questions I get the most, John. I think those questions most are, how can I help? You know, are we gonna win again in football? Um, what's going on with Conference USA? Um, and, and the national landscape. So we'll touch on all of them before we're, before we're done today. But, um, you know, in terms of how people can help, I think three or four ways. One, sharing a positive message about Southern Miss. Speaking positively about our program during the challenging times, I think is very, very important. And because uh, great things are happening, even though the scoreboard, the headline might not always, or the chat room, might not always reflect it. Great things are happening. You know, the, the incredible amount of construction on this campus, the great work of Dr. Bennett, the great work of our faculty, great stuff is happening in Southern Miss. And, and we need to share that positive message every day. That's one, first and foremost. Secondly is supporting our student athletes here. Um, as I mentioned before, and it's no secret, and it's never been a secret at Southern Miss, you know, outside of the high resource five conferences, it's a financial battle every day in intercollegiate athletics, as it is in higher education. And we're no different. And Southern Miss has always kind of uh, outperformed its resources, perhaps. And we've always been lean. We're going to continue to be lean, be responsible. Um, but we need everybody that cares about Southern Miss to, if possible, to buy a season ticket. Buy a season ticket. Buy one this spring, buy one for the 2015 football season. Filling up the rock is probably the single most important thing we can do. I know how it lifts up a football team, I know how it impacts recruiting, and I know what it's going to mean to the financial bottom line. It's going to drive all revenue streams. So purchasing a season ticket, and we priced our season tickets in all sports to pretty much accommodate everybody. The person that can afford the club seat or a suite certainly has that opportunity. But the vast majority of our people are going to be in the grandstands and, and we've got, you know, the top of the rock, the corner of the rock, you know, is maybe the best bargain in college football. And, and the same at basketball and baseball, we've, we've fairly priced our tickets. So share a positive message, buy a season ticket if you can, buy an indiv individual game ticket if you can. But season tickets are really, really important to us and right now is very important. Right now is the time. All right, you mentioned the national landscape. What's going on, NCAA, the national landscape, Southern Miss, UAB and Conference USA, all kinds of things going on out there. They are, they are. And, and, and kind of a segue into that, John, you know, talking about the Eagle Club, you had asked me about that offline a moment ago. Um, that's the other piece. You know, what is the Eagle Club? The Eagle Club is all of us coming together at whatever level we can, whether it's $50 or thousands of dollars, whatever level we can, every contribution to support student athlete scholarships is meaningful. And we need to grow the Eagle Club from a couple of thousand members, we need to double that. 
We need to grow this over to four or five years to 4,000, 5,000 members. That impacts you know, how we're positioned nationally, how we're positioned in Conference USA, to your question. Um, let's talk UAB, Conference USA, and the national landscape in that order. People have asked me about those things. Um, my response to UAB, um, tragic is a really strong word, but, but for those student athletes and for many members of that community, probably it's a term that's okay to use. You know, um, very disappointing, very disheartening for, for the folks at UAB. Uh, UAB um, has asked to remain in Conference USA and all of its other sports and at our winter meetings in January with all of the athletic directors, all of the presidents will, will consider that. We're not really going to talk about it before then. And then expanding membership in Conference USA, that's when we'll first talk about that, that as well. There's going to be institutions that want to join Conference USA. If UAB departs, we're at 13 members. 14 is probably a better number. I'm not necessarily for expanding to 14 unless another member clearly adds value because I don't necessarily want to split the financial pie mm -hmm. by 14th member unless it adds value. But we'll get to that this spring as a league. And then the national landscape, so much change, you know, and what's on the horizon for Southern Miss and what's the, what is the college football playoff uh, landscape and, and the Big 12 situation not getting a team in, what does that mean? None of us have a crystal ball. You know, the last five to ten years, last 24 months have proven how fluid the times are and remain. You know, the 129 schools, 128 without UAB, that are going to be competing at the FBS level in football are going to stay together. That's first and foremost something everybody needs to know. We're all staying in it together. Uh, there may be some continued shifting of resources and greater autonomy given to the high resource five conferences. But we're still going to be competing on the playing field with those folks and going toe to toe as we always have at Southern Miss. Um, I've made the statement last summer that Conference USA is not our destination, but it is our home. And our mission today needs to become the very best program in Conference USA, become champions in Conference USA. And we've got to focus on that every, every day. We're not there yet. We've been there before, we'll be there again. We gotta focus on that, being the best in this league. And I think if we're the best in this league, if we're back to an eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 win football team, which we can be, winning championships in the future in basketball, going to the regionals in baseball, I think we'll have an excited fan base and that's gonna position us within that national landscape. You know, whether, whether an opportunity comes up in another conference, down the road remains to be seen. But I, you, and our fans can tell the story of Southern Miss Athletics like I did in New York last week. Over and over and over. I probably talked to five members one-on-one -on -one of the national media about the greatness of Southern Miss and about this two, three year window in football being a hiccup. Because that's all it is. And those that doubt what Southern Miss could be in the future are mistaken. Great days are on the horizon for this program. And I know sometimes that's difficult to see, but I know you see it. I know a lot of fans see it. I want more fans to see it and know it, and I think in the days ahead they will. All right, before we wrap up, as we turn the corner into 2015, we've got our winter sports that are competing right now. The spring sports will be started before long. And then before you know it, football season is back. Mississippi State is the football season opener for 2015. Talk about all that a little bit because the, that's one of those things we're talking about. The future's so bright around here. Let's rip through that. Let's start with basketball moving into the spring sports. You know, I think both Doc Sadler and Joy McNellis are going to do great things. Joy had a phenomenal year last year. She's got that program in stabilized and good position for continued success, and she's a tremendous role model. And I think Doc will do the same thing in, in building this basketball program uh, based on the history. But we're going to go through a transition right now. That, that's clear. We've got a young team, new players, lost five senior starters. Um, and we've got another issue or two we've got to work through. But that's why, in part, why I like having a very experienced head coach. And I know you do as well, and you've spent a lot of time with Doc. And so we'll get through this challenging time and do good things again in basketball. Uh, I think we've got very exciting baseball and softball seasons on the horizon. And then in golf and tennis and track, good things are going to happen. 
that's going to lead the way into football. And if we have a mission here, it's to fill this stadium with black and gold on September 5th, 2015. And what a phenomenal opportunity. Mississippi State is going to come in for our home opener, probably preseason ranked in the top five, top ten probably at worst. They've done a great job. Kudos to them. But this is about Southern Miss and our football program. It's going to be a ticket that's in great demand, obviously. And we need this stadium in black and gold. And our fans who want to come to that football game, who want to support this program, who want to restore this program to greatness, they need to call our ticket office right now and put a deposit on a season ticket for 2015 in football and help us fill up the stadium in black and gold. And that's going to be so important. What a way to launch our season, a winning season, a season that I think we'll have a chance to go to a bowl game again. And, I mean, I'm glad we got a heavyweight coming in on day one. I'm glad it's Mississippi State, who we've won more games against than lost historically. Hopefully we can do that again. And uh, I'm, also, I'm also very appreciative of the fact that the decision makers at Mississippi State have put this series back together with us. And, uh, but, John, that's going to be just a fabulous way to, uh, you know, maybe in some ways define that mm-hmm. day, define mm-hmm. 2015 for us. The atmosphere will be off the charts, win, lose, or draw. And uh, I'm looking forward to that. We're talking every day in this building about how to make that a great event. Uh, but I do want to share with our fans that don't have season tickets, um, they're going to have the first opportunity to get them. Um, and uh, our faculty, staff, our students, our alums, they're going to have the opportunity to buy a ticket to that game before anybody else. And if they want to call right now and put a deposit down, they can. And uh, probably be a nice holiday treat for yeah. somebody, actually. Yeah. And uh, so we'll make that happen. And uh, a lot of good things in 2014. Um, I'm looking forward to a much bigger 2015 than 14. Um, I'm a glass half full guy. I'm a positive thinker. I want our fans to think that way, like you do. Um, and I'm a realist at the same time. Um, I know we got hard work in front of us. We're committed to it, and uh, and we're going to make it happen together in 2015 and beyond. Well, it's been a lot of fun sitting around and, and reflecting. Uh, we need to do this more often. This will be we a did. lot of fun we to did. do, uh, you know, more often and give our fans a chance to to find out what's going on. But it's been great. It's been a great 2014. You're right. No doubt 2015 is going to be a great year at, at, at Southern Miss. I'm excited for it. And uh, again. Happy holidays to you and your family and all the Golden Eagle fans. And uh, let's enjoy these uh, couple of weeks of the holidays and then back to work uh, the first of the year and make 2015 one of the best ever at Southern Miss. John, thanks for your great work. Uh, And thank you to all of our fans for their incredible support over so many years. Um, Again, it's a Southern Miss spirit. And uh, we don't take the support of any of our folks for granted. Any alum, any student, any faculty member, any fan. Now's the time to, to hop back on board if, if you're off. And let's do great things together. Uh, it's, been a, it's been a good 2014. Happy holidays. Uh, let's make it a special 2015. Southern Miss. To the top. Right on. All right. Ha- happy holidays, everybody. We'll see you next time.